What's up guys, today we are going over ADV's spookiest Pokemon, the Indomitable Gengar, and his various attributes that come together to carve out his niche within the advanced metagame. Now, you may be thinking that this is just some fragile special sweeper, but nothing could be further from the truth. While yes, Gengar can fulfill that role admirably, Gengar in advance is a very nuanced Pokemon. Uh, while it's, his defensive stats might not be anything to write home about on paper, the advanced metagame is shaped in such a way that what he can do defensively, which is take one, maybe two hits, is absolutely game-changing and metagame-defining. It's so defining that if you can throw a wrench in his ability to take that specific one or those specific two hits, that in and of itself is huge. Gengar is incredibly common because it's incredibly powerful and easy to use. And he can run a million different sets, but we're going to try and cover the most important basics. So Gengar sits firmly in the number two slot behind Tyranitar. And you might be thinking, well, okay, it's got a great special attack stat. It does. It's the highest in OU. The only thing you'll see that's stronger is the occasional Alakazam, who is technically in Borderline. But uh, yeah, Gengar is really strong, but it doesn't have any special attacking stabs. Um, so it's just going purely off coverage. Yes, that's true, but its coverage is also incredible. I mean, Ice Punch, Thunderbolt, Fire Punch, Giga Drain, if you don't want to run Hidden Power Grass because you want to heal. I mean, those are that's incredible coverage. That's elemental. So many Pokemon succeed because they have just some of those moves. So, Gengar's really good, but it's not just about throwing special attacks at the opponent. And it's not even about its various supporting moves, like Taunt and Will-O-Wisp and Destiny Bond. Or even going mixed, like to bait in the special wall and then to explode on it or to focus punch. No, no. The reason why Gengar is firmly in number two is because of the power of spikes. And it's typing, which means that it floats above those spikes. That is the reason why it is so reliable at taking that one hit or those two hits. And uh, meanwhile, with its common coverage, including moves like uh, Ice Punch and Thunderbolt, then flying Pokemon generally don't enjoy that. So its counters get hit by spikes. It doesn't. It's tough to wear down. So we're, we have to start this off with that because its relationship to the spikes part of the metagame is crucial to understand it. And uh, it, the relationship with Tyranitar and Skarmory is just incredibly important. Um, Skarmory not only is the best spiker because it's a great Pokemon overall in phases and stuff like that, but because it commonly runs spikes, whirlwind, protect, and toxic. Meaning Gengar completely blanks it. He comes in to throw around Will-O-Wisps and special attacks and taunts and all that. We'll get into the specific sets later, but I, I promise we need to go over this first. And uh, Tyranitar um, is good because it it pursues Gengar, it prevents it from coming in and just harassing you and switching back out with the spikes down. And Gengar being able to take that one hit from Tyranitar is potentially game-breaking. Or if it hypnoses and switches out to Dugtrio... Things of that nature. So hopefully now you're getting kind of a picture of where I'm coming from with the Gengar is good because spikes and these guys are important and Blissey factors in and so does pretty much every Pokemon in the metagame. Every Pokemon in the metagame is somehow affected by Gengar and spikes. I mean, there are great spikes abusers, you know, like um, Mixments and Zapdos and Flygon, but like every single Pokemon has to consider something when... Um, with something to do with Gengar, because Gengar is number one. Uh, if you are not ready for a Gengar with spikes down, I mean, you could say this for a lot of threats. If you're not ready for Aerodactyl, you'll probably lose. You know, you have to preserve your Suicune or whatever. But Gengar is one of the fastest ways to lose if you're not ready for to deal with it with spikes down. Um, it will just mercilessly destroy you if you don't know what you're doing, so... Yeah, it's a very unforgiving Pokemon. There are a lot of great unforgiving Pokemon, but Gengar is chief among them. And of course, it's great even if you know what's coming. And of course, Mark of a Good Pokemon and all that. But anyway, now that you know, Gengar is at the best of the best because um, of spikes and its relationship with them. 
So, uh, of course, some people might say, well, without spikes, is it as dangerous? And the answer is no, definitely not. So you might think, well, I want to get rid of spikes. Oh, right, Gengar's a ghost type. Gengar prevents you from getting rid of those spikes. Hmm, how inconvenient. And uh, that's another reason Tyranitar wants to pursue it, because then guys like Starmie sometimes, although it runs Psychic, because it hits Gengar super effectively, but mainly Fortress, who spikes and uh, spins, really wants Gengar gone. Um, so two birds, one stone. Uh, with Fortress, you lay down spikes for your own Gengar to abuse, and with Tyranitar, you move the opponent's Gengar so you can um, spin freely. That whole part of the metagame is just... It's almost its own faction. Um, another Claydol, another spinner, Stab Psychic, great bulk, immune to spikes, uh, one of Gengar's um, less favored opponents. Gengar most enjoys facing offensive teams um, once the spike has gone down. I mean, not at the end of the game, because a lot of things can take a hit or two from Gengar, but it's more in that mid-game that Gengar shines, when it's spreading status and throwing out attacks and wearing the other team down. I mean, mano a mano, one on one. It, I mean, yeah, it beats things that are like quad weak to its attacks, like a Salamence Flygon with Ice Punch, um, or like a weakened Swamper with Giga Drain or something. But it's uh, generally something you want to stick on a healthier team, break that healthy team down. It can definitely finish the job, but um, don't expect many like one v fours with it or something. It's not what Gengar does. It's a uh, it's a get in there as soon as possible once the conditions have been set and start messing up kind of Pokemon. So, um, yeah, those spikes. Every single Pokemon on this uh, list is somehow tied to Gengar and spikes uh, in a massive, massive way. Even Magneton, who you might think, well, you know, I, I kill Skarm and then um, and that's kind of whatever, so it's not spiking as much, but even get Magneton ends up being like the de facto Will-O-Wisp switch. On because Will-O-Wisp switches are hard to come by, and I realize the irony of this um, when Moltres is on the screen, because Moltres A has the same thing, and B is immune to will but we'll get to that in the relationships thing later on. Anyway, so now we know why Gengar, uh, what Gengar does, why it does what it does, why it's so good. So, what set does it use to defensively harass everything? It, it defensive things are, uh, if it's defensive use is so great that it doesn't just chuck special attacks at the opponent, what does it do? Well, let's get into it. Defensive. This is the premier... Um, okay, first of all, I should say this is the premier set. I'm saying the idea of defensive Gengar as a whole. You cannot encompass every single possible good Gengar set. I'm not just talking like any set, period, like Sludge Bomb and stuff. No, I'm talking like good sets. Because it can viably run just about everything. It's typing and levitate are just so strong. Will-O-Wisp is pretty much the only thing... It always runs, because that's uh, what turns it from special attacker that kind of gets walled by some things to just everything hates this thing. So, well, this is pretty obligatory. I have Ice Punch here from an earlier take where I messed up. But yeah, this is, the bare bones uh, format is, let's say, around here. Um, so you're thinking, all right, well, it's taking those one that one hit per game. What might that one hit per game be? Well, a big one is plus one HP flying from Salamence. Now, because of sand, this doesn't mean you're going to be switching in on uh, choice band Salamence, unless uh, you invest in some more defense, which is possible, but in time. But more in that, this is very often the difference between getting swept by Mence and taking it out and winning the game. Um, one reason DD Mence sometimes struggles is because even once you remove the Skarmory, and you blow up on the Swampert, then Gengar tends to hang around. That's a reason why Pursuit is such a big deal. Uh, even on teams that aren't trying to look... Uh, even on teams that aren't looking to abuse spikes or to spin safely, just Gengar itself is such a problem that you have to force that damage on it. Because uh, with DD Mets, it's not about killing Gengar necessarily. I mean, you wouldn't say no, but if it's like a metagross... Yeah, Metagross runs Pursuit off that no-stab, mediocre special attack, just to damage Gengar. Um, because, yeah, you want it in range. So, uh, that's what I meant when earlier I was speaking of how taking that one hit shapes the metagame, and being able to 
uh, throw a wrench in it being able to take that one hit also shapes the metagame. Like, for example, if you Will-O-Wisp, uh, or if you, like, Ice Punch into a Metagross, I felt like I don't really want to stay in here because it might be Psychic with Lum, specifically for Gengar, I might add. Um, or he might just, you know, Meteor Mash the heck out of me and I want to keep his healthy in case of Mens or Heracross being annoying. Uh, and he pursues you, and he's like, well, now this dies to a plus one Mens, and that's the entire game changed. So I hope that example is uh, now made clear. Anyway, so that's what this uh, 248.44 benchmark is. 176 is for the litany of base 100s that litter the tier. Mens, Zapdos, Salabi, Jirachi. Uh, just because even if you're not going to hit them particularly hard, like Jirachi, you can still burn them, or Gusty Bond, or explode to prevent the call mind or something I, I think at this point you're be getting to see just how many viable options Gengar has Gengar has some game-changing moves um so 176 so you might think well there's 40 EVs left um surely you know special attack on a defensive yeah I mean you can you totally can uh especially because some Salamence um because Gengar is such a big deal then some Salamence EV to survive uh, zero special attack Gengar or Ice Punch, so you know, you throw them here, and hey, it helps, and it also helps with key bolting Suicune and Sand with Spikes down. Again, Sand and Spikes, big difference. Um, but what most people do uh, is they like to creep a little on other Gengar, and also this isn't as big a deal now that Tyranitar are running A, Lum, and B, Jolly uh, quite often. Um, not necessarily Jolly, Lum, I mean Adamant Lum too, but you get the idea. But uh, generally, Adamant um, 332 is usually the minimum, if you can afford it, of course. The Adamant to um, to outrun Adamant Tar after a dance, so you can taunt it, so you can burn it if it's lefty, so you can debond. You can explode to prevent a second one and send it in Dug Trio safely. Whatever. Finish it off if it's at low health. Gengar's speed is uh, is a big factor, and it's one of the two reasons that uh, Tyranitar started running Jolly, because it was like, well, I'm sick of getting a dance, and Gengar still outruns and burns me. Or, you know, I might need to dance um, and just blow past Gengar immediately, even with Lum. I don't want it. So things like that. Offensive Starmie was the other one, but uh, Gengar is kind of a big one. Um, and you can creep on other Gengar, of course. People cre go creep crazy a lot. And uh, if you just want to go all the way, this happens to be Adam and Doug Trio, but Adam and Doug Trio, um, kind of rare. And, yeah, Doug Trio versus Gengar is usually a kind of a desperation move. So... Uh, yeah, we're going to assume this, and then you can throw more into defense, for one. 52? I mean, the more you throw in, then the safer you're going to be, um, like, is surviving plus one Mets and Sand, but I believe 52 survives plus one Gyarados plus Sand guaranteed, and since so this set very often runs Ice Punch and Thunderbolt, start getting a clear idea of what it does, then, uh, it's kind of helpful. These, uh, moves handle the spikers, and, uh, Give you great four times um, coverage against Mans, Flygon, Gara. Um, Gengar is definitely the biggest wrench in uh, in Flygon's plans. Flygon is otherwise a great Pokemon, but giving a free switch to Gengar is just so horrible that um, you really have to watch out for it. Gengar is a metagame shaping Pokemon, if I haven't mentioned it already. So, um,. Yeah, so I can do this, and can go more, and then you can kind of fill in the blank however you want. Again, Gengar is really customizable. These are just the basic benchmarks. So you might be thinking, hey, that Pursuit Tar thing, well, yeah, it, it dies to this, especially with Sand. So what some players begin doing is they dropped the speed, and they went to this much defense. Um, funnily enough, I believe that's um, the benchmark. Um, modest, whoops. I believe this is the benchmark to live the uh, Pursuit or Crunch uh, with Sand. Um, yes, it is. 112. Now, can we go down to 108? No. Okay, 112. So, it kind of works out perfectly, this spread, because some people like to go down to 300, and, um, you know, for... Um, like mix mints, and then they creep a little because you know, uh, DD Tar also tries to hit 300, the standard one. And then there's things like offensive Salby hanging out down here, so they can go down, and then they start creeping on 
uh, DD Tar a little more, and then eventually they start going up to 308. That's pretty much where most of them will sit now because Timid Moltres is a large threat. So that's a that's a big one, and it coincidentally gives you these two perfect benchmarks. So you know, beautiful. Um, you get to survive both of those. So this is the slow defensive Gengar. Now against like a call mind spam team with like Jirachi, Salvi that, that are fast, mainly Jirachi, then you're gonna have to be careful, especially when they've got Dug Trio for the tar and uh, Blissey's getting lured some other way. So you, you're definitely not going to be able to pull that last ditch Will O Wisp trick out of your hat or Destiny Bond, even better if you have it, but uh, that, that is technically what it does. So then, you know, the last move can be Explosion, like um, the standard small team, like T-Tar, Gengar, Skarm, Bliss, and Filler. Now, I mentioned uh, the standard team, that's because T-Tar, Gengar, Skarm is like such a classic combo, and then you throw in Bliss and Pert, and that's just recipe for success, pretty much. And Gengar is such a huge part of that. But yeah, that last uh, can be pretty much anything. Um, you can have Ductrio to further facilitate Gengar, or you can have Skarmy to clean up, um, you know, the mess that Gengar has made. And Explosion goes a long way in that, because a lot of people think, it's not as much of a surprise these days, but um, you might think, oh, Will-O-Wisp and Special Attacks, well, my Blissey's just going to handle this. And kind of, kind of not. Kind of because yes, obviously, for the reasons you might think, and kind of not, because if you do it a lot, and Gengar will get a lot of opportunities against a defensive team, um, if those spikes stay down, then uh, Blissey's going to run out of soft boils eventually. Um, but yeah, it, the idea is to blow up on it and take it out. Um, if you don't want to kill yourself to take out Blissey, you can Willow Spit with Sand and Spikes, and then Taunt, and it cannot soft boiled, and then you run away and force it out. And it is miserable. So that's the idea. Explosion is also great with Pico because... Uh, things like Snorlax or Suicune, uh, if they boost it up, you can um, prevent them because of the way uh, ADV mechanics work, that explosion um, ends turns, uh, then you can prevent them from waking up and then finish them off with Doug. Uh, Gengar is very good friends with Doug Trio, especially because, um, you know, if you switch out a T-Tar Pursuit and survive, that doesn't be good if it comes back later and they'll finish with the job, so that's why Dugtrio very commonly accompanies it. The idea is pretty much come in on Skarmory uh, safely, fire off that Will-O-Wisp, survive the T-Tar Pursuit, because if it doesn't pursue, then it's going to keep doing this the whole game. And we'll look, look into alternative methods for dealing with Gengar, um, rather than just, you know, falling in trap to this uh, T-Tar thing. Uh, yeah, we will. And, uh, you know, then you survive the Pursuit and you go to Doug, and there goes, um, there goes the T-Tar. Of course, I mean... Look, the idea of Gengar being this infallible thing in sand, it's partly true because Skarmory does give it so many free openings, but it also means that it can't, like, fight with Blissey or Swampert anymore, so it's definitely a trade-off. Um, plus, the ways of dealing with it. Okay, so one would be, because at this point it's probably sounding like Gengar is this borderline uber Pokemon. No, the um, way, one way to deal with it is uh, the great Pokemon is Special Defensive Zapdos, it works really well on these teams. Um, and it's not immune to spikes, and the weak ice punch means that, yeah, it's going to be annoying, but it can stand in Gengar's way. Now, you're, you're going to need more, um, opportun or, uh, more methods for dealing with Gar, obviously, but, uh, it is a way to stop, uh, Gengar, or halt it, or slow it down, without buying into, um, without playing into Gengar's hands as much, you know? Because when Blissey or T-Tar comes into Gengar, that's obviously what it's expecting. It's like, all right, well, I've planned for this. This is the whole point of Gengar that I'm going to wear these guys down and take them out. So that's one way. Um, another way is, uh, personally, I like black glasses on Tyranitar. The extra damage, I mean, Gengar can't start EVing for that without making some serious concepts. So, um, yeah, uh, that, that's one way. Of course, leftovers are really big, but... Um, and the last way that's quite common is Drill Peck on Skarmory. Um, okay, so it's definitely a concession on Skarmory because Toxic is so good. But um, being able to prevent Gengar from switching in so safely is just equally game-changing. And I mean, Gengar... Remember, Gengar is bulky enough to take those hits that you're thinking should take it out, but it's not bulky enough to take even weak hits comparatively, like Skarmory's Drill Peck. Like, that's, that's a 3 KO in Sand. Um, so you, it's, that's another game changer. And then suddenly the entire game opens up. So, um, 
yeah, with sand, that's, that's, can't do that three times. So, I mean, obviously it's not as cut and dry as that, but it's a big one. And big, especially defensive scar can afford to take a hit from Gar as well. So, um, especially defensive scar also began running Bopec because Skarm and Gar are also best friends themselves. And before Skarm, it was just toxic, uh, toxic Claydol itself. So Gengar never had to get involved um, with Claydol. Did I say Gengar involved with Claydol? Because that's what that meant. If I didn't say it. Um, but then Claydol began running Refresh, and that's just a pain, because it'll stall out Skarmory all day, and Gengar trying to fight it is just a losing battle. You don't do enough damage. You have to Ice Punch it for not a lot of damage, for not a ton, and, you know, it's it's going to refresh your Will-O-Wisp often. I mean, some players like to clear the field of Claydol entirely by going for Destiny Bond, meaning, you know, if, if Claydol ever takes it out, then it goes down too, but then you've lost your Gengar, is it worth it? It might be. It depends. It's kind of a big one. Um, and also, you only have eight Destiny Bond PP. Um, and Claydol can spam spin if it's, it expects that's what you're trying to get up to. Um, and uh, it'll gain health in the process. So I mean, you can do some. <laughs> You can do some serious outplaying attempts with like Will O Wisping it and pawning it on refresh so it can't try that because technically this is a set Will O Wisp, Taunt, and Destiny Bond. Um, just going pure spikes related support, T Bolt or Ice, depending on your team's needs. You know, whether Suicune or Salamence or Zapdos is a bigger threat. Um, this is more on the fringe side. This is some advanced stuff, but um, yeah, just so that, I think it's worth mentioning um, with the Clay Doll conundrum. But yeah, we're, we're generally going to stick to these accepted standard. Now, another way to help deal with the Gengar barrage is um, to minimize how, like, what exactly it irreparably ruins throughout the game. So, uh, even having something like Wish Bliss might help, but, and like, the Skarm uh, limiting its damage potential is a big one, and Wish Bliss um, keeping your teammates healthy so your entire team's not getting systematically worn down. Also, some backup healing to Softwood 16 is very nice. But also comes in play uh, with Refresh Swampert. Because if Re Swampert is running the standard of Surf, Toxic, Refresh, and Protect, then this Gengar set, I mean, it can taunt, but it can also eat a heavy Surf, and then taunt will wear off after. So unless they've got a grass move to scare you out with, um, then you can stay in on the next thing. In the set. Or you can you know pivot around with Blissey and such. And uh, Limiting the opponent's spikes is also nice. Like if you've got a Taunt Skarmory, I mean, it's probably going to get it down eventually if you're running a defensive team. Because that's part of what Skarmory does. It uh, it t preys on defensive Pokemon that can't hurt it that much. But um, yeah, so that's that's another way. Uh, but yeah, Refresh Swampert is nice, and that's why some like to run Fire Punch and Giga Drain, um, along with your standard Taunt slash D Bond slash Boom combo. Um, this is uh, definitely a now, you might notice, hey, that's specially defensive Zapdos, that's even better now. Yeah, it is. But what this does is it gives you more of a handle on the Pokemon that can potentially take a hand and threaten you out. Now, while you're going to be worse against Salamence and Zapdos and Suicune too, um, what you do improve on is Jirachi, Metagross, and even Magneton. I mean, if you can cut short a Magneton that's trying to hold you off, then odds are you're going to be really also, the harder smack on Heracross is huge, because Heracross is one of the few things that really threatens Scar and Blitz teams pretty much by itself. Matter of fact, a lot of them run HP Ghost just for Gengar. Now, you wanted an example of something that Gengar can take two hits from. And the answer is, of course, uh, Heracross. HP Ghost. Or, uh, not HP Ghost, obviously. Rock Slide. So... Uh, that is an example. Now, uh, without Ice Punch, then you you have to assume Ice Punch. It's better to not uh, reveal your set immediately. Um, the idea of this set is to act like any other Gengar. You know, you just spam Will-O-Wisp because that gives away zero information and they have no idea. Oh, you, you kind of have to play like, oh yeah, my Gengar can totally Oko your mess if push comes to shove. And Because um, Will-O-Wisp is just that strong by itself. But um, speaking of another thing that Gengar can take two hits from, this one's not as safe, but uh, as you can see with the special defense investment, Gengar is very often a pivot into mix maps, ideally with Ice Punch. So let's just 
kind of is that. Um, um, yeah, so as you see here with sand, this is very close to a 2AKO. So generally, um, what it does is it pivots like a Swampert or Blissey or into it. And Blissey alone, if it doesn't come into Brick Break, um, can force it out with the threat of Ice Beam. Um, unless it's really willing to go down with the ship to take Puplissy and, you know, like Zapdos Range or something, which it would need help with, but Mixed Mets also often goes with Spikes. But, um, yeah, the, the idea is that Gengar makes it hard to aim for certain targets because it can come in and just totally steal your moment. Like, if Swamper switches in on Fire Blast, not the end of the world, because your HP Grass is still putting the Fear of the Devil into it. But... Um, when Gengar comes in, it's like, ah, oh, man, this thing okos me cold with Ice Punch. I gotta, I gotta get the heck out of here. So, that's, uh, big th Brick Break and HP Grass, those are your ideal targets. Ideal Brick Break. Um, and if they Fire Blast, then it misses. But yeah, the, the idea of Gengar is that it can take some hits and pins. Like, you can take an HP Grass, and then a Dragon Claw, and then another HP Grass, and things of that nature. Um, it requires careful play, because, as you can see, Gengar's speed and just good enough bulk is what keeps these teams together, not just, you know, giving them an offensive option so they're not just sitting on their butts uh, waiting for passive damage to do it all, but Gengar turns them into an offensive machine and even gives them some respite against these threats that really uh, scare them just by themselves, the mixed menses and heracrosses of the world. Um, it's the reason why so many Tranitar and Metagross on offensive teams these days run Lumberry. So, yeah, I think uh, that's, that's an accurate synopsis. So, um some yeah basically uh this gengar runs on spikes teams um and it's great abuser it's uh it's it's i mean i've just gone over everything so i won't repeat myself but just look at this advanced list and think about its relationship with will-o-wisp and gengar's moves so um we'll return to defensive guard in the examples section but for now, we're going to move over to offense. Now, this one is more straightforward because it's generally three special attack, two or three special attacks, kind of like the other one, but it's a lot likelier to run two. Let's just start off with Ice Punch and Thunderbolt because they're good. And then uh, you can run... Um, Taunt is less common on an offensive set. And again, offensive sets are less common because people like their bulk with spikes, and it's often offensive enough just with a defensive set. But this is for more aggressive teams, because uh, Gengar does fit in well on non-spikes teams as well. It does not entirely rely on spikes, um, despite how much we talked about it just now, having that relationship with spikes, that's just because of how effective it is with them. But it definitely is in and it of itself. Um, there was an old advanced player who once told me, I mean, people didn't always look at Gengar because it blocked spin. They looked at it because it was a good, strong offensive Pokemon. And it was a good spikes abuser, but not, you know, oh, it blocks spin fortress. But anyway, that's that's a lot. So Ice Punch Thunderbolt. Usually Giga Drain, because being walled by Swampert as a special Pokemon kind of really sucks. So Giga Drain or HP Grass if you're a baller because it's stronger. Um, Swampert surviving a Gengar Giga Drain and Torrent pumping it back is a common play for teams that can't uh, afford to really dance around Gar. Um, HP Grass, that extra BP definitely puts it the edge of a lot of scenarios and also makes it harder uh with max special attack because that's what you're rocking with this um makes it harder for tyranitar to trap it ideally you get some spikes down because this set does not need spikes um but it often does now the simpler sets with spikes then they require less overall support or rather they are supporting the team less because they are the offense um so with spikes you can just run like you can run four attacks and just when Blissey comes in, it's like, well, more spikes, and now I'm going to, and then I'm just going to keep wearing it down, and I'm get, eventually going to win. And I love that coverage because uh, it's so strong uh, when, you know, you hit a Metagross with a max special attack fire punch. Like, um, let's look at this versus the choice pin. That's so much damage. I know it doesn't look like a ton, but trust me, in a game scenario, that's a ton. Especially when it's like, all right, I can take two T-Bolts and then fire punch. It's just like, oh, that's... Uh, big yikes. Anyway, so since we're running offensive, then we're going to go fast. Now, if the, like a more offensive spice team, it's less likely to be like Blissey and stuff. It's like more likely to be like Jolteons and Starmies and offensive rock and things of that nature. Um, yeah, um, obviously goes great with uh, Cloister offense. And you run like similar speed investment. Um, now, the old set, um, old set, 
I mean, you can also hypnosis is also very good because it just totally ruins this with the legs down. The reason more people don't run hypnosis is because sixty percent is horrible. It is uh, it it is a game loser. Of course, if it went if it hits, it's pretty much a game. Anyway, the old standard is something like this with the guitar and um, I believe it is. Am I remembering that? Yes, that survives Aerodactyl Rock Slide with um, Sandstorm. So, uh, yeah, generally it looks something like this. So you got your beef behind your special attacks. You can drain is the standard. HP Grass is the other move because healing can be good, can keep you out of Sandstorm range, can keep you out of that uh, hurt range. Um, so, like for some scenarios and things of that nature. So this is the standard, like bulky offensive set. Now, you can mix and match. You can run Explosion. Um, like most commonly, you would see this on, uh, or even like this sometimes, but usually, say this. Um, on a special offensive team um, with Doug Trio for uh, just to lure in Blissey and take it out, just really gang up on it. So you can trap it on the switch, and then it's forced to sleep, so you have good odds to finish it with Doug Trio, especially in Um Or you can blow up on it and just uh, definitely make sure the job gets done. Um, and that's generally a good strategy. Um, you know, make your Suicune or Jirachi uh, really dangerous. And uh, Gengar's defensive properties are great. So you could even go like an offensive-defensive Gengar. Like, you could totally easily run this. And here you see an example of how uh, vicious Gengar can be. Like even defensively, it's this is an incredible tool set. You might say, oh, my offensive team is strong, but it gets kind of flattened by DD Mence if it boosts. And then you just throw this on and Gengar is still going to fulfill most of its duties. And uh, still, um, and they'll be able to check Mence for you. So you you get the picture, I uh, I hope. Um, at another point, <sighs> yeah, this this Gengar uh, does does it all pretty much. I mean, you can throw in whatever moves you want to, as long as you have your uh, purpose. Oh, um, hypnosis and explosion are uh, desperation moves against like boosted stuff like Hachi and uh, um, Suicune and Snorlax. And I mean, it's self-explanatory with Tuktro. Tuktro is really nasty with Gengar. Because it, um, it, I mean, look at the text, like, Blissey, Tyranitar, Jirachi, Pedro, Celebi, those are some Doug victims, so it's got to be careful, and Hypno with Doug can be really nasty. Of course, it can be really unreliable, because Hypnosis is terrible, so it's not unlikely that, um, you miss on the switch, and then you try and hit it again, but now it's already burning sleep, so it's not unlikely that, uh, Wakes up and you know just puts you away and it's just eh. If you if you're getting a ton of free turns with Gengar, sure, but it's not all that reliable. So, um, uh, yeah, I think so. Suicune and Snorlax and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much offensive Gengar for you. Um, yeah, I think that's that should sum that part up. For the most part, um, missing anything? Oh, um, yeah, you can also do stuff like Focus Punch, um, which Blissey and Tyranitar, if those are your targets, then you know, yay. But then when the target is like Jirachi, even Metagross starts becoming uh, easier to deal with, or even like Swampert with this set, then you know, it's you gotta, it becomes harder. Hypnosis is like the ideal catch all, but it's very unreliable, so, um, Handle with caution, I guess. Uh, yeah. We're not going to go into every single ridiculous option, but pretty much every advanced player who's really gotten into the tier has looked into this whole area um, and gone, what more can I do? Oh, uh, dynamic punch is an option. Uh, it's kind of like hypnosis, but with even worse accuracy. But um, there are some matchups, like if you're not running Will-O-Wisp and Fire Punch, like defensive Jirachi can totally blank you, and it can be tough to switch Doug Trio went in defense of Jirachi because part of the appeal of that Jirachi set is that it has weapons for Doug Trio with Body Slam. Um, but yeah, Dynamic Punch. Uh, and um, if, you're, if you've blown your sleep somewhere or if you're just not getting sleep, like you want this kind of set, uh, Explosion, then um, even if you've got Max Special Attack then uh, and Spikes Down, then sometimes Tyranitar is just too bulky. And... Um, I mean, T-Tar uh, invests most of its bulk. I mean, Max HP lives... Months, but a lot of its bulk is centered around its primary function, which is to remove Gengar, so it's, it accounts for this. So 
though, some people like dynamic punch because it means even if you run into that matchup, you can still neutralize. And if you you, you want to be using it on the switch, ideally, because if they're not switching T-Tar or Blissey in, mainly T-Tar, then you can still come back later because that's what Gengar does. Um, and you're warding off the primary threat. And other things can usually be dealt with after the fact. Like if they if they pivot per into it, then you have a free HP grass, for example. Um, and I mean, things get dicey when you factor in Zapdos. Zapdos is one of the best ways to deal with Gengar without really having a check to it because it's naturally bulky and it's not uh, a problem with Spike. You can take things like T-Bolt into Ice Punch and shit like that. Um, pardon my language. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's why D Punch is there, and because uh, D Punch can potentially get you out of every match. Um, this is a fringe option, but uh, it's worth mentioning. And I'm just uh, making sure I don't re forget anything. Um, yeah, that's that is that pretty much. Um, now we go back to the last set, or back to the last set. We just go to the last set, and this set is I'm leaving this in there for. Um, inclusiveness is sake but this set is just evil so uh, i think the music is fitting for this um there's not really a spread i mean you pretty much just use the bulky gengar spread um and then you mean look a counter like blissey and then you parasong and then you take your pick of hypnosis to sleep obviously protect a burn a turn a parasong you can do substitute for a similar thing but then that means you can't do it over and over again uh, you can run taunt to prevent phasing because you know that the other, the other Pokemon can get away. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, I just included this for inclusiveness sake. This is pretty much entirely a cheese set. But, uh, good to know that it exists. So, keep that in mind. Um, it can definitely ruin something like, uh... But, I mean, generally, most of the time, if you just use a taunt WoW Gengar, or just a WoW Gengar with the right team support and play well, then it's generally gonna have similar effects. So, um, that was inclusiveness sake. Most of what Gengar can be done... What can be done with Gengar is found within that was just Now I'm going to go take a leak because I cannot pause these videos and I can't edit them. So uh, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. OBS is amazing. But um yeah, so listen to the creepy music and then we will continue with our penultimate, meaning second to last section. Um Gengar um matchups with other Pokemon and then uh, common Gengar teams. All right, I will be right back. All right, I hope you enjoyed your intermission. Uh, wash your hands. And now we will go over these handy-dandy viability rankings. So we've gone over the trend for dynamic It is kind of crucial, to say the least, with the whole pursuit thing and sometimes the DD thing. And how mix sets often run lum because respite against Will-O-Wisp is hard to come by. So you take it where you can get it. And those offensive Trantar sets often... Uh, don't need the full extent of leftovers, especially because it's also good for things like Toxic Skarm. Skarm and Gar are, uh, you know, the status spreading, spike setting, and abusing duo. Um, also, I forgot to mention that 
uh, with the whole Gengar Doug thing. I mean, it's nice, but both of them are not exactly bulky Pokemon, so that does leave you in some sticky spots. Like, even with, like, Skarmory, if Skarmory is the best follow-up to Doug, then that's, like, a super free drill pack if he's running it. So there's 30, and that can make the difference um, later on and when it's, like, trying to take a Swamp or Surf or, um, like, an Arrow Rock Slide or something. Or even in a Gengar War. Gengar Wars are surprisingly rare, but they do happen. Um, speed, speed Creep does happen sometimes. But, uh, yeah, like, the most that you'll see them is, like, in Spike games where it's just unavoidable. Um, but those are surprisingly rare. You generally... Because Gengar is such a good weapon that you don't want to, you know, have it totally crippled by Will-O-Wisp. Um, so, I think, uh, yeah, they just usually, like, hit each other down a couple times, so... But th that's not common. Um, so now we move on to Metagross. That's what Fire Punch is for. will o -Wisp, obviously, I'll switch into that. Sometimes it runs the Lum, Psychic, HP Fire, Mash stuff, or Scarm, Gar stuff, and still be being able to get past Scarm and, like, threaten Gengar and still have that explosion for Swampert. Let's open up those fixed offense teams. Um, yeah. Uh, Gengar can spring a Destiny Bond on the Mash, which is nice. Swampert is, uh, we had discussed the Torrent Pump thing and dealing with spikes and refresh. I think that sums it up nicely. We've discussed the Zapdos dynamic, you know, the specially defensive one, and even the offensive set being able to take T-Bolt and Ice Punch, um, even without bulk, is really, really helpful. Um, and that's sometimes it even runs Thunder Wave, because Gengar's ability to take one hit might, in some games, be, uh, that, that might be Zapdos' Thunderbolt, but Thunder Wave just ruins it, so, um... That's a crucial one. Uh, we've discussed the Scarlet Dynamic to death. Uh, Blissey Ice Beam. Um, sometimes people will be a little eager to taunt Wisp at the beginning of a game. Don't do not do that. Just like, give it a free Ice Beam on it. No, you should be you should be taunting when Blissey is forced to soft boil and you can prevent it and uh, abuse it. Uh, like, don't be hasty with Gengar. It's, its help is really valuable. And since it's not... Unless you have a Wish Blissey, which, I mean, yeah, that can be nice, but unless you're wishing on the Heracross that they have, then it's not as easy to pass to Gengar as you might think. It is for now, it's got a good spot. Um, you know, coming on Earthquake and stuff. And you got to really threaten what you're coming in on, because very often you'll see a Swamper just trade a Hydro with you. Um, even if it's not Torrent, then that Hydro is still going to stay. Yeah, so uh, don't be too eager with Blissey. And, uh, yeah. Celebi's weird. Celebi is uh, another source of respite against Will-O-Wisp because it has natural cure. It has 32 PP recover, and you know taunt is a thing, but also stab psychic is a thing, and it's is it's uh, psychic is really strong. So Gengar is not shrugging that off like it will when we go over to Claydol. Um, yeah, it's gonna hit it really hard even without investment. So I mean, obviously, you don't want to switch into ice punches with three layers of spikes down, and Celebi is kind of. Defensive Selby is kind of an invitation for Scarm, but those often come with Gengar, so um, with one spike, Gengar can often find itself kind of annoyed heavily by Selby, especially since some of them run special defense investment, because surprise, surprise, it wants to check Gengar, and has the tools to do so. Uh, Suicune, um, like, remember what I said earlier about how you don't want to get into, like, a late game with Gengar trying to Oko things? Suicune is, like, one of those things. You want to be finishing it off or, like, um, forcing it to hang on by the skin of its teeth, switching into you. And generally, if that's the case, you can probably outlast them uh, with Gengar. That's what Gengar does. It outlasts things really easily, really aggressively. Oh, it's kind of like a Blissey. Kind of, I mean, Blissey kind of does it aggressively, but Gengar is just, you know, step on your throat in an instant aggressive. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, the... Defensive Gengars versus defensive Suicunes, things like, you know, will and Fire Punch, Get Rain, Explosion, not going to get very far. So you got to, when you make those uh, changes to Gengar sets, you got to realize the concessions you're making, and um, you got to plan for them in some way. Um, I feel like a recurring theme in these ADV videos is, you know, have a plan, be heads up, that kind of thing. Um, and it really applies to Gengar, because while it is... Um, I guess what most people would call a noob stopper, in that it, it'll just totally run over someone who doesn't know what he's doing most of the time. Or what they're doing, sorry. Um, then, yeah, that's true, but it also... Um, oh, man, I forgot my point. I've been talking for a while. Uh, excuse me, basically, 
Suicune, um, you, you got to be aware of what you're giving up, uh, is the gist. All right, so, uh, Jirachi, defensive Jirachi is great against offensive Gengar, but as Willowbus becomes more and more of a mandatory move, point, I mean, you pretty much always have to protect it. Like, you're going to have to have that specially defensive Zapdos rest uh, or refresh Swampert support with it. So, and uh, DP Skarm. Real pack to really make sure it doesn't get anywhere. Um, offensive cell or offensive Jirachi, I mean, doesn't want to switch into Will O Wisp, but in a one on one situation, or like uh, we're in HP Grass, Giga Drain, or like Ice Punch was drawn, or even a T Bolt, then it's off offensive Jirachi, it's uh, stats like he's so strong that it hits uh, Gengar so hard that it's um, going to be problematic for Gengar to just stay in a spring of Will O Wisp. That's one of those one on one situations you really want to avoid with Gengar in the late game. I mean, look at this with Sand, that's dead. It was just the 248, um, 248-44, no special defense set. But, um, yeah, this is against the bulky Gar, so even with Sand, that can go down. So, offensive Jirachi. I mean, some people even run Lum, just for hypnosis, and, uh, not being bogged down by Willis. I mean, and uh, things like Zapdos T-Wave, too, because that's a big one. But, um, primarily lefty still. So, I mean, if you do have to Willow us, don't be like, Oh, well, I, I might not be able to, um, you know, it, it might be Lum, so maybe it's better I just, you, you should assume. Um, then, uh, and the worst thing about this is that you can't even Destiny Bond it, because it'll kill you with sand. You have to hope that it doesn't kill you so you can be bonded again. It's, and then it gets starts calm mining, that's a whole mind game. So, see, this is what I mean. When, when Gengar starts getting into those stupid 1v1 games against things that are probably going to beat it, then that's where it does not shine. It shines when it has the, those free opportunities, uh, when it's scaring out immense or something, and it's just harassing things on the switch. It, it doesn't do well, you know, one on one. Even like things that, uh, you know, beats like, um, like Swampert, then, you know, that Hydro, or even that Surf, it's going to sting. It's going to leave a mark. So, uh, Snorlax. Gengar is one of the Pokemon most responsible for suffocating Snorlax variants, alongside Skarmory and Tyranitar. Those three just you know they resist all, everything it does, and they um, they spike and Gengar will o wisp and it sucks, and uh, it's it's a whole mess. Geng uh, Snorlax can of course fight back. You gotta watch out for Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is run exclusively for Gengar, um, and that's it's all. Uh, own video actually, uh, or its own section of its own video where um, you know, Snorlax tries to deal with the consequences of Gengar and uh, being burned, you know, Fire Blast, still making Shadow Ball sting through the burn, still having self destruct afterwards because Gengar will still lose one on one. Um, things like Focus Punch and Skarmory can come in all day and then you get brave and start Shadow Balling and hitting the Gengar because you don't want your T Tar to get Focus Punched earlier. So you definitely got to be careful. It's not as, um, not as easy to just. Smacks and relax around, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely one of those Gengar along Skarm and Tar is definitely one of those Pokemon that makes you think, why am I running Snorlax? Um, yeah, and uh, Taunt Wisp of course can run uh, can I mean really help against the defensive uh, Snorlax experience. So, um, but again, one on one, you're not going to want to fight it. You're going to want to you know dance around it. That's what Gengar does. Elements. We've already gone over the mixed and choice band and dragon dance uh, relationships. That's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, if you drop ice punch, then this is scary thing. Of course, as a Salamence player, you can never be like, oh, well, I bet he's not even running ice. Punch. No, that that's stupid. You you gotta assume Willowisp. You gotta assume ice punch. You gotta assume people. Everything else can kind of be up in the air. Um, you usually assume grass until proven otherwise, or unless you have no choice, which sometimes it's more and more common to not run grass these days. And if you do run grass, then you run. It. Well, but generally, you assume Ice Punch, uh, Rain, and Grass. And also, you preferably check for Fire Punch, but you gotta check for Grass. Um, but yeah, um, so there's that. We've gone over the Dug Trio relationship, how it's really nasty. Uh, Starmie, Bulky Gar, and even non Bulky Gar, can live a Hydro Pump from Starmie, but dies horribly to Psychic. However, uh, though the Psychic variant is also not great, um, well, it doesn't kill the bulky gar, but neither does the bulky gar kill it. So, uh, with T ball, you'd have to explode and then finish with Dutch, which is a huge pass. Like I said, it has to avoid damage on the, on the switch in, and Starmie can just switch out and try again later. Is 
over the natural character status. And, you know, the reason um, why this Starmie set isn't so popular because it kind of loses on its own to toxic protects Skarmory. You know, just pressured way too hard, and then Skarmory. And if you were hitting Skarm harder with your team, then you weren't going to invest in the spinner, so that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, gotta watch out for that. Um, I mean, offensive Starmie sometimes runs Psychic too. Not just because hair cross is annoying and because it's got good bulk, but mostly for Gengar. All right, so that's uh, that's that. Magneton. Hmm. Uh, in a pinch, it will get ruined by fire punch. It'll switch into Will O'Wisp and annoy you if you've got a Dug Trail, then whatever. Uh, fire punch also takes quick work of it. Claydol, the dynamic there is uh, Claydol run Adamant a lot now because they want to run speed to escape from Pursuit Tar. Um, because they're also running Refresh, as we went over earlier, and Claydol obviously goes, um, you know, that goes against its Psychic, but it needs to, so, um, that Psychic is gonna do, I mean, not a ton, so some people invest, like, a uh, 32 or something, but in Sand, this is going to get the job done, so you can't count on that. Um, so, it also messes with the Destiny Bond if, uh, Sand is getting in your way, so another thing to take into account. And Ice Punch is not doing very much. So, uh, yeah, the offensive sets are... Um, if, you, if you're... if you So, this... We'll switch sides so you guys can see it. This is... Um, Claydol. Claydol Psyche is doing 70 to 83 with uh, regular nature. So, basically, it's going to 2k you uh, either way. And uh, most of them don't run special attacks. So, you can scare them with Ice Punch. But, generally, you're going to want to damage them other ways. So, you know, consider that Drill Peck's farm. Helps with other, other Gengar... Helps with Heracross's focus punch to ruin your life. Especially if it's trying to, you know, oh, please switch to Gengar so I can HP ghost it back to life. Um, you know, and uh, Claydol. So, yeah, that's something. Uh, Claydol and Magneton pairing together is uh, is a big problem because th then, you know, Skarm's not a factor anymore. Then it's just you, your Gengar, trying to hold on to that one layer of spike and. That's why a lot of teams, um, you know, that rely on Gengar with spikes down really struggle against those. Because, you know, once you take away the spikes, they struggle to really generate offense. They mostly rely on that first 12% being done. So, yeah. Uh, Aerodactyl, no. Aerodactyl lives uh, one T-Bolt, something to consider. Um, unless it's, yeah, you need a high roll from max special attack. So generally, most of the time, you're not going to seeing it kill um but that, that is something to consider because like if you're running the the um this kind of set then yeah you're not going to aerodactyl is another pokemon like gengar that often goes entire games without being touched until it's ko'd or maybe takes that one hit um so they're similar and they're great together because they're great spikes abusers but they also make your team frailer and passive damage isn't i mean it's strong in longer games but um it's not strong enough to the point where if something like gets in and plants its feet and just kind of launches attacks, family like Swamp Hurt, then you're going to struggle to switch to it, because uh, your team has, like, um, prepared for the conditions of just being able to overwhelm everything with offense, and, you know, once that other guy gets in there and gets his attack off, you're going to struggle to dance around it. And Gengar is going to be your main weapon, because it's so uh, powerful and not choice, so fast, you got the great coverage, and, you know, all that jazz. So... Uh, Jolteon is great because it partners well with Gengar since uh, they both target special walls. That's pretty much it. Uh, Jolteon is also very commonly used as a Gengar check on offensive spikes teams where Jolteon is found. Uh, that can't really afford a hard Gengar counter, but need to switch into it once, twice, maybe three times if you can lure a uh, T-Bolt because of the amazing Bolt Absorber. Um, but yeah, generally you're going to want to... This is uh, your one of your Gengar checks. Um, being faster and not weak to its attacks is amazing. So that's, uh, that's a big one. Heracross, we've gone over the HP Ghost, the Will-O-Wisp. Um, yeah, plus, it, can, it being able to take plus two or two rock slides means that also uh, Bulky Gar can survive a plus two rock slide Talic Berry Heracross. Um, so that's another uh, reason, that's another big one hit that it can take. Um, you know, sub down to Salak and Swords Dance. So that's uh, that's a big one. That's why uh, physical offense really hates Gengar because it just spreads those whips, wisps, it takes the annoying attacks, and it threatens the KOs, and it's 
Nightmare. Moltres is a more newfound uh, partner for Gengar on the Bulky Spikes teams because, you know, the Big Five, the Titar, Sparm, Gengar, Pert, Blissey kind of run whatever it wants. I mean, it has threats, but it can pretty much run whatever it wants in the sixth spot. So, like, Moltres, because um, it's a terrifying option for as we know, is incredibly hard to switch into safely, especially with Spikes and out. Um, and it absorbs Willowisp itself, so you don't have to, you know, play any Pursuit Tar stuff and, uh, and, uh, or worry about your Blissey and stuff like that. So it's more respite against Willowisp. That's the name of the game in dealing with Gar. Uh, Milotic, um, Milotic, generally, uh, Milotic is one of those things, like Swampert. Like, when it gets in against those offensive teams that have been worn down a little, once they've lost a little of their spike-based momentum... Um, then it can be kind of hard to switch into because those teams that overload on the offense, as we'll see, like Arrow, Jolt, Gar, it's like, yeah, well, what do you switch into, like, anything? Um, my Lodic Surf is surprisingly hard uh, to switch into, so you might think. And when you see your Gengar is, like, the only thing that can really hit it hard, you, it can be a mess. My Lodic's got great special defense, and this Surf is hard, and you don't want to switch into it, and you're barely leaving a scratch, and things of that nature, so... Again, Milotic is another Pokemon you really want to deal with on the Switch instead of, you know, going head-to-head -head with. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, Flygon is annoyed by Gengar like little else, but um, that Rock Slide on the Switch, if you can get it, like uh, if Skarm's been dugged, or uh, dug, uh, magged, then that's that's a game-changer. That's the Pursuit Tar range, um, you know, along with DP Skarm to make it even easier, stuff like that. But yeah, generally Gengar switching into Flygon Earthquake is, you know, Salamence levels of momentum reversed. So, Cloyster, um, not really a great spinner, not just because it loses the Toxic Farm pretty hard, but also because Gengar switches into it several times. Um, but yeah. And Gengar makes a great Cloyster partner, though, because Cloyster makes great offensive teams, and Gengar is the prime spike abuser and protector. Um, and they also go more on the offensive because, you know, we're Skarmory sometimes if it's not being given a million windows of whirlwind everything, which is often how you end up with situations like, oh man, now my, I had to sack my Gengar, now my, or I had to sack my Skarm, and now my, uh, I had to sack my Skarmory, and now my Gengar is to 1v5 their team. You know, with Cloyster, that's less of a thing because it forces offense, boom, which again, sometimes gets kind of stuffed by Gengar and kind of really sucks, but, uh, that's why you have your teammates and your plan for dealing with it. Uh, Fourier, we've gone over that dynamic, the whole spike spin thing. Sometimes it runs HP bug, or uh, not HP bug, it used to run HP bug, and it was totally reliant on T-Tar killing Gengar um, for it to work, but now I think it's more likely to run HP ghost, because it also hits Claydol, just like HP ghost does, or HP bug does, but uh, it's not like Claydol's threatening it. Uh, P2, P2 is Milo-esque, and that you really don't want to go one-on-one -on -one with it. At this time, you're not even hitting it hard on the defensive side, because people just do anything, it's a normal type. So, um, yeah, and Gara, um, the way of Gara is good primarily because it hits really big things once you get, uh, gotten Skarm out of the picture. Um, I mean, you, it's not as simple because, uh, it's something like a, if, I don't know, you gotta be, you gotta run water or else toxic waters destroy you, but if that's not really what you're going for, um, or if you have other ways to go with them, then something like a T-Wave to catch, not just Zapdos or Arrow, but Gengar on the Switch, that's that's horrible. Um, but yeah, generally Gengar is a great Gyarados check. Especially with the 52 defense, if you can afford it, most people can. You never die to HP Flying in Sand. Alright, so that's where we stop there, and now we're going to conclude by slamming some Gengar teams together. No, this is not comprehensive, because every single Spikes conglomerate you can think of pretty much can uh, figure out a way to get Gengar in there. So the standard is Titar, Sparm, Gengar, whoops, Swampert, Lissy, and then literally whatever you want. I mean, you could go in with these five and do fine. Um, they go over all the sets we've mentioned earlier, you know, the Pursuit. Or, I mean, most of the reason Titar, Titar would love to run his physical, like, rock, that EQ, Bug, Focus Punch, because it helps with dealing with, with threats that um, are kind of annoying when they bring the game to a standstill. This game excels, this kind of team excels when they're like really suffocating you um, with like constant pressure, but if the game is brought to a standstill, whether by spikes being removed or just like, like getting in a good position, um, then Suicum and Snorlax are a big problem, and T-Tar helps with them a lot. I mean, it doesn't really counter Suicum, but it hits it a lot harder. 
um, and forces the rest, and you know, then Skarm or Pert can roar. If Pert's not running refresh, which the ship usually is these days, except Skarm's toxic, as, uh, as we'll see in a second. So opposing Skarm can be kind of annoying, even if you are a taunt Skarm, because these guys are still victims, and even this could be a victim. But yeah, uh, Pursue, Drill Pack, will o -Wisp, Refresh, Wish, here, that would be good. And then uh, if you have a Doug Trio last, then you're really going all in on the, oh my god, my Gengar and Blissey counters all get trapped. But you're also giving the uh, opposing guy um, a lot of, and you can also obviously get Mag Farm, so it's a really nicely rounded six, but um, it's not without its flaws. And, um, it's pretty much, Gengar is all the offense. Gengar plus Spikes is all the offense, so you gotta really... Maybe you play really aggressive and catch that Magneton before uh, before it gets your Skarm and then Claydol. So, and uh, Arrow is another common last. Starmy is a common last. Yeah, and pretty much every single conglomerate, conglomerate of this kind of team, um, when uh, you just start switching things into making it more offensive, like Blissey can be Jolteon, or it can be Jirachi. And I mean, I'm not saying Jirachi Starmy. That's just I'm just throwing examples at you here. Um, Jirachi Starmy. Um, Metagross, uh, Metagross with Blissey, um, Zapdos, you know, whether it's special defensive or offensive, however you want to do it is fine. It, that's pretty much the template for all these Spikes teams. Um, and, you know, this can be a cloister too. This can totally be a cloister. Uh, and on the more defensive side, it can also be a fortress if you're going to throw in, I mean, you uh, Celebi can be both offensive and defensive. You know, you throw in your arrow or your Bliss here, whatever, uh, standard you know, standard stuff. Um, and you got to be, only by experience are you going to learn um, pretty much, like, which kinds of archetypes exactly uh, struggle with certain things. Like, this in particular hates Doug Trio and, like, Mixments and more than others. And, like, something like uh, the Skarm last with um, Moltres here. Like, we were speaking of Moltres recently. This is a popular one. This is great, but you really got to... This. I mean, it's really scary. The offensive pressure is just hellish. But once you get to that, uh, you know, Suicune slash Snorlax thing, this is not going to help you much. You're, if you run Roar, then that's great, because then you rack up pressure on them with spikes. But you got to make sure you get those spikes in the first place. Uh, a good strategy is, if you think you're facing Magdal, try to not, because they can't do damage. Those teams cannot do damage if they don't set up. So what you do um, is try and do as much damage as possible without even using your you know, get in Moltres, get in Titar, you know, it can run physical more easily if this is Refresh and this is Wish and this, uh, this soaks up Will-O-Wisp. So, I mean, it's still not going to take, um, it's still not going to take Thunderbolt well, but it's going to take one, like, easily. It's more about the two of KO. Also, if you run that Fire Grass Gar, then Moltres just obliterates you, so make sure you can handle it. Um, there's a lot of teams that drop Blissey cannot very safely. And a lot of teams do want to drop Blissey for one reason or another, like you want Celebi's defensive coverage uh, against Waters, as well as like Snorlax and Metagross. Uh, that's something to consider. So those are the Spikes ones with the defensive Gar, and the offensive ones are more like, um, get rid of these guys. That's just uh, like Doug, and then you throw in your Calm Minders, um, you know, maybe Celebi, maybe know, Oregon 2 for Doug Trio, if you want to throw in a T-Tar or a Heracross here. Notice the very important uh, ground resistance that Kinger is providing you. Um, I'm just making stuff up here with the teams, but I think uh, you get the idea. Um, Reggie Ice is a nice one because it also provides that special, that Blissey lore with Explosion while also checking special stuff um, and just being a decent overall threat. Um, and yeah, you throw in Celebi, I forget if I did that already, but this is a very well-known team, it's very, M-Dragon made it, and it's very strong and hard to go wrong with, and Gengar feels it. Um, one set I guess I did forget to mention earlier is that you can totally go double status, you know, Hypnosis, Will-O-Wisp, and then usually two attacks. If you're really ballsy, you can go Explosion, just for pure support and just, you know, have that one attack, but do have that one attack, don't be like this guy you know don't do that you know thunderbolt or ice punch just figure out how you're gonna like if you're going mono ice punch figure out your plan for opposing suicune things of that nature um and yeah i think that summarizes everything i hope you guys enjoyed this video even though it was incredibly long it's incredibly important to understand gengar um it is 
huge part of the advanced metagame. It's right behind TTR. It's just amazing. So I, 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 I want to go on a rant about like how it can be not as bulky as you think, and then at the same time, bulkier than you could imagine it being, with it taking those attacks it shouldn't, but then, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one against Jirachi or Metagross, it just falters. But I think I've, I've, I've gone uh, more than enough in-depth. If there are any questions, please ask. Um, if there's anything I left out, I don't think I did. I hope not. But yeah, I'll, I'll answer any questions in the comments. Um, if you have them, like, you know, why didn't you mention that Gengar can run Haze? Uh, and the answer is because it, it is not a sustainable counter. To something. Um, something like Vaporeon can run Haze because it will stick around. Well, Haze on Gengar is pretty much like a... I, don't, I mean, it could run anything. Look, the lesson with Gengar is it can run anything. Um, it really could. I mean, far stupid physical attacks, that, that is really just not good. But, uh, you know, besides hit, uh, explosion, maybe deep punch on some spike states. But, yeah, basically you run anything, um, and it'll probably be good. Um, as long as you know what you're doing. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you off. Catch you off. I'm sorry. I'll catch you all next time.